This is your weekly trip to paradise, Louisiana style, with Gary Rasponi and Don Dubuque. Paradise, Louisiana is presented by Rotolo's Pizzeria. Fresh ingredients, friendly service. That's just the way we Rotolo. Demco, your touchstone energy cooperative. Pro Drive Outboards. Baton Rouge Coca-Cola Bottling Company. Vinny's Car Wash and Oil Change. Louisiana Fish Fry Products. And by CCA Louisiana and the CCA Louisiana Star Tournament. Welcome to this week's edition of Paradise, Louisiana, and here we are, Marshall and Bayou, in the French Quarter. Man, right. what a beautiful location. Absolutely. Uh, my name is Captain Ben Tiblier. I'm one of the co-owners here at Marsh and Bayou Outfitters. Uh, we're located on the corner of Madison and Charters, which is just a half a block from the cathedral. We uh, obviously sell gear and apparel, and we run fishing trips. Now you guys got kicked off with a magazine. We did. Same name. Correct. That worked brother, out good, huh? Yeah. My brother uh, started that sportsman to slide L back in 1999, almost 18 years now. And you were the cover boy? I was. Congratulations. You've come a long way, man. I've come a very long way. <laughs> what made you decide to open a store like this in the heart of the French Quarter in New Orleans? You know, being born and raised in South Louisiana, I'm just fishing. That's what we did. My dad, we grew up in Indian Isles, grew up on the water, and um, learned how to drive boats, learned how to fish, and we just loved it. And when my brother opened the magazine, we kind of stayed in the industry and we saw a need for it down here. Walking around, there was a lot of art shops, a lot of dress shops, a lot of antique shops, but there was really nothing for the sportsmen. So we found a little spot and here we are three and a half years later. Well, it must be very rewarding to get people from all over the world who are tourists to come in here and share with them what we know here to be Louisiana, some of the finest fishing and hunting in the world. Oh, absolutely. And that's the whole concept is that Everybody, you know, 90% of our business, 95% of our business is tourism based and, and they love it and they love our city. They love the architecture, they love the history. And uh, when you start talking about hunting and fishing, they do that all over the place as well and they love it. They show pictures and it's pretty, it's pretty cool. It really so tell is. me, how do you decide how to merchandise a store that's located in the French Quarter with tourists? Trial and error, you know, bring things in, some things sell, some things don't, and you just kind of move things in and out. What is your most popular item? What are people looking for the most when they come? It's got to be something to do with an alligator, huh? No, no, no. I don't really sell many alligator things, you know, but uh, <laughs> baby shrimp boots is a pretty popular right, item. And then, uh, you know, of course, our hats and our T-shirts. It's, um, you know, people walk in, they want a unique souvenir. So the things that we have, you know, we make them. It's our designs. It's my brother's designs. And uh, we... We print them and we get them going. What's the store the schedule, the hours? Uh, we're open um, seven days a week, and we're open from 10.30 to 6, except for on Sundays we're open from 11 to 5.30. All right. Mm -hmm. Gary, we got a busy show here at Marsh and Bayou. We're in the right place for it, but we got some teal hunting. It opened up, and boy, we had mixed reviews. You made a good hunt. I had a good one, but some people not so bad. I know, but uh, where I went was really exciting because there's a place I've been hunting 20 years with Cleve Vincent, and... Uh, these young boys said, now I got it set up, got it set up even better than I remembered, and the teal were there. Yep, and we'll cover that for you with the state duck calling champion, by the way. You get to right. meet him. Also, I had a good fishing trip down there in Buras. I spent a lot of time in Buras, made a teal hunt. People were shooting limits down there with Captain Ryan Lambert, fishing, right. Cajun fishing adventures. And the day before that, we went out and caught some beautiful redfish down there, which are, you know, pretty much running 12 months a year. When you can't find speckled trout, we're kind of in a transition period. Well, you got to do a blast and cast. Then. Well, there you go. Or cast and blast. Blast yeah, and cast. That's the way, way, way it works. That's the way to do it. All right. We're also going to visit the Martian Bayou magazine and tell you about the cover feature and the story about our Cajun invasion trip to Alaska and a whole lot more coming up from the French Quarter. Martian Bayou. Wait, 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 out. I smell something coming oh, through yeah, that door. Yeah, what is that? Oh, we're cooking. All right. That's what we do around here. We eat. <laughs> Where we go? I've been All in the right place there. And lunch, too. Right here at Martian Bayou Outfitters in the French Quarter, New Orleans, where you're watching Paradise, Louisiana. Hey, I'm Mitch Rotolo, owner of Rotolo's Pizzeria. Our pizzas are prepared every day using the freshest ingredients. But Rotolo's has so much more to offer than just delicious pizza. We have an array of healthy salads and tasty wraps, a wide choice of pasta like spaghetti and chicken parmesan, zesty buffalo wings, 
and our selection of savory calzones. And don't forget to try one of our amazing desserts. Come into any of our local restaurants or check out our entire menu online at Rotolos.com. That's just the way we Rotolo. Relationships are everything in life. For me, the most important relationships start with faith, family, and friends. I feel blessed to be married to my high school sweetheart of over 25 years. We were both born and raised in Louisiana, and so were our four children. We're proud to call Louisiana our home. That's why giving back is so important to us. Whether it's car seats, bicycles, or helping those in need. At Gordon McKern Injury Attorneys, we feel blessed knowing that we can come to work every day and help our community when they need us the most. Call 800-653-9968. Pod's moving in storage. I need to clean out my study. We'll deliver a container. My brother-in-law's moving in. Maybe he'll help you pack. He's lazy. We can refer some professionals. It's just until he finds work. We can keep things at our storage center for as long as it takes. I am not happy about this. Or you can keep your things on site for quick unloading. Did you say freeloading? I said unloading. I heard freeloading. I'm sure you did. Store on site or let us drive your things to our secure storage center. Pod's moving in storage solved. Welcome back to the heart of the French Quarter, New Orleans at Marsh and Bayou Outfitters. Gary had a really good trip just the day before teal season. You know, we had that unusual Friday opening, and Thursday's usually my day to fish. Went down to Cajun Fishing Adventures with a couple of really nice fellas. Phil Smith of Gonzales and his buddy Elliot Lonker came along with us. Speckled trout, a little difficult to find, but everybody was happy to find redfish, and find them we did. Uh, saw some bait movement, typical way you fish down in that area, went through across the Mississippi River over to the Point Lahash side, looked for the signs, mullet jumping, a little bit of striking going on, and it wasn't long before it was on. Talking about fishing with absolutely no live bait, no dead bait, one fairly experienced fisherman, the other one admitted he was pretty much a rookie, but he, he caught on very quickly, and we caught some beautiful redfish. Fishing under a cork, or just fishing tight line. That's the way you do it. That's the way you're supposed to do it when you go with Ryan Lambert. Though. Well, we're going to take you down and show you some of that action. Red fishing in Buras, Louisiana with Captain Ryan Lambert of Cajun Fishing Adventures. Lead him in. Lead him in and we got him. All right, we're catching redfish down here. Oh, right on the edge of the Mississippi River. Got some beautiful reds today and they are biting hard. All right, Ryan, somebody coming out red fishing this weekend. What should they look for? Where should they concentrate? Well, you know, with the, we had a ton of west wind with the storm, so it knocked a lot of the water out, but now we have high tides in the morning. So, I don't know, I think if you're gonna fish along the grass beds, you can either go inside the grass beds in the morning, and then as the tide starts falling, then you come outside and you find that nice clear water because that, water, that grass is gonna filter that, that water out really nice, like we're doing right here, actually, and uh, just throw a spinner bait on them, it'd be pretty easy. The high tide in the morning, you can fish points, you know, shrimp and a cork if that's your thing. You know, everybody knows I'm plastic only, but it seems to work out. You put plastic under a cork and pop it, a good concave cork, make a good sound, you'll be fine. And into the net we go! Way to go, Phil! Nice catch! Last week, the bulls all went offshore to spawn. You know, that full moon in September, you'll be catching them by the thousands, all of a sudden, boom they're gone. Nobody can find them. Well, they just make their move out to, to the spawning grounds a mile offshore and they do it. They spawn and they're, they're just coming back. So right now we're just catching a lot of fish. The tide was so low. I'm talking about like three foot low. So everything that was in the marsh got pulled out. So a lot of them were just eating that bait that got pulled out as well. So everything will go back to normal here in a week or so. And, and we're in transition right now. You know, the trout are, are on the rigs, on the islands, on the outside. In October 1st, they all just make their move to the inside with the bait. And then we start our fall pattern. I mean, it's pretty predictable. Now stop here and bring him over here with the rock. Redfish has pretty much become our go-to fish. I mean, it's a 12-month a year fish. Well, it is, and, and a lot of that's necessity, you know, the. The oil spill hurt the, the trout fishing for a good four years, and this has been the best year of a comeback. They're more dispersed, although the river was high and pushed a lot of them toward the west and to the north, but still a lot more trout and a lot more dispersed. And next year, there's even gonna be more because you know there's not that many for you know cannibalistic fish out there because they're not big enough to eat the small ones. So I think we'll have a lot more trout and we'll get back to normal in another year or two. <laughs> Ah, nice redfish. There we go. 
what about this winter? What is the forecast for trout for the winter fish? Well, they'll, like I said, they'll move in and they'll move into all their winter haunts and there'll be a lot more fish this year than last. We had a, a good spawn, so I, I think we'll be fine this winter and next next spring, we'll see a lot more of those juveniles grow up and we'll have a, we can get a, a little bit lower river next year to have a more area to spawn. I think we'll be fine. There he comes, just drag him in, Phil. And there he is, all right. Gonna be a great weekend out here. You'll notice a change in the humidity and the temperature. A lot more comfortable to get out here and catch some of these nice redfish. Just follow Captain Ryan's advice and you got a chance to limit out. Ask me about my Tempur-Pedic. Ask me how fast I fall asleep. Why not talk to someone who's sleeping on the most highly recommended bed in America? Ask me about staying asleep. Tempur-Pedic owners are more satisfied than owners of any traditional mattress brand. Ask me how it feels after 10 years. Tempur-Pedic, the most highly recommended bed in America. Ask about Tempur-Pedic at Olin's, where you know you always get the guaranteed low price. Olin's is the only store in Baton Rouge and Lafayette with the full line of Tempur-Pedics. You're watching Paradise, Louisiana. It's opening day of teal season and Vermilion Waterfowl. Hey y'all, it's Sam Barbera. I'm with the Louisiana Wildlife and Fisheries Foundation. The foundation is a nonprofit that raises funds and provides support for the Louisiana Wildlife and Fisheries Department. We assist with numerous projects like Black Bear, Whooping Crane, Bald Eagle, as well as family, youth, and women's workshops. For all of the information on the foundation, visit laWff.org. We need your support to help our wildlife and fisheries. Visit laWff.org. Welcome back to Paradise, Louisiana. Today we're at Marsh and Bayou Outfitters on Charter Street in the heart of the French Quarter in downtown New Orleans. And quite a ways from here, there was a lot of teal hunting went on this past weekend. Actually, it was a three-day weekend for a lot of folks because we had that very unusual Friday opening day of teal season, which allowed me to get out. Saturday morning on our radio show, Linda Kutch and I were Teal Central. We were getting reports in from everybody, trying to get a feel for what was going on. Some very good, some very poor. Uh, we'll get to the hunt down there in Buras with Ryan Lambert and your hunt over at Vermilion uh, Waterfowl Hunting with uh, the state duck calling champion. But aside from that, I got to tell you, the worst reports I got were from Delacroix Island. And that typically is a very good teal hunting area, especially during the teal season. For some reason, whether it be water levels or whatever, the birds were not there. Talked to Captain Chris Pike, Jimmy Car Corley with Waterfowl Specialist, and neither of those guys had good hunts. They, Kind of hung in there and grinded it out a little bit, but uh, for the most part, very disappointing opening there in Canola. But as we know, teal hunting can change overnight, and there may be some better reports as we get later towards the end of the season. Uh, Biloxi Marsh, the wildlife management area, Darren Digby was there, and he didn't report a lot of birds, but he said he grinded it out. He hung in there, and he and another buddy ended up with two full six bird limits. So they ended up with 12 teal out of the Biloxi Marsh. Uh, Kirk Stancil, way out west, Hackberry Rod and Gun, not the best hunt, not the worst. I'd probably rate his about a seven. They got some standing water problems, re result of uh, Hurricane Harvey that's still plaguing them over there. He said the agricultural field's naturally doing a lot better than that, the marsh area. That Arizona. played into our hand over there in Gaydon because that water's still on the road. And exactly. D. Gohagen, hardcore hunting. You've been over there in Jennings. Didn't have the big dove, uh, the teal hunt that is generally like a dove hunt in that area. Can't explain why. Again, that's another one of those areas typically very good and for some reason not as many teal. But all in all, they had enough birds to make a pretty good hunt out of it. And you got some other reports. Well, this, if you're talking about this, you know, Jadon was just tremendous. But uh, we talked to Jay Thomas, you know, the guy that gave me the search and that. Mm -hmm. and he hunted in Kaplan. They were so excited because the week before opening day, there was thousands of birds in the area. It was swarming. Uh, something happened. He said they had to work. Some blinds got it, some people didn't. Mm -hmm. My grandson hunted in Kaplan. Another thing, all his buddies were excited. They had one blind to kill seven or eight. The other blind killed four or three. It was real sporadic, and they didn't do any good. Just north of them, my brother and them hunting the Iowa area. Always tremendous. 
Some blinds did tremendous, did good, did that. Now, the reports I got from Saturday, that was all Friday. When Saturday, the report started going down. Blake, you talked to him on the radio. Mm -hmm. They had a good hunt. They didn't have that great a hunt Friday, but they had a great hunt Saturday, mm -hmm. okay? And then Calahula, the, coming from way over there, didn't have a great hunt Saturday. All of a sudden, they showed up Sunday and Monday. Blake and them killed, killed Teal this morning. And while, while we taping his show, he sent us a, a good report and mm -hmm. some pictures. So it, it's all sporadic. Brett Rollins killed, had a good Sunday hunt at uh, Calahula Lake. Full straps and stringers again. I told you he had people set up in Welsh. It started out good, and then it, it went went south. The other people, Ted Ballou, they had three generations. They were hunting almost the same area where we were. It, he had the three generations that he was bragging about. He said he can't wait for the four generations because he had one there to leave at home. But uh, they did the same thing. They did tremendous opening day Friday. A fog set in Saturday. Well, Catahoula deserves being talked about, not for good reasons. It's really bad there, and nobody can really explain why, but the flyover that Larry Reynolds did said less than 200 birds on Catahoula, and that is just horrible. So whether that's going to be the same conditions when we get to the big duck season, only time will tell. Uh, but the bottom line, if you're planning on doing some teal hunting, 352,000 teal in southwest Louisiana. Throw in another 21,000 in southeast. There are plenty of birds there. You just got to find where they're concentrated because as we've been talking about, some areas it's a feast, some area it's a famine. And they move because all this water, they got a lot of places to move. And mm -hmm. if you shoot them heavy, they usually move. All right, the hunt we had in Buris, uh, down, well, across from Buris on the east side of the river with Captain Ryan Lambert, uh, the rule on Friday was everybody got limits. Uh, and, and we had a little bit of a delay getting out there by 8.30 in the morning. We were pretty much full limits, a blue wing teal. Uh, we were hunting with a couple of guys, Larry and Tony, from uh, over from the uh, Alabama and Atlanta area. And they were talking about, uh, you know, how great it was to come over here and experience what we've got. One of them ended up getting a banded bird that was banded last year in Saskatchewan. One green wing teal, everything else was blue wings. Uh, we had a great hunt, Ryan's dog, Logan, who has now achieved 9,500 lifetime retrieves. She's on the brink of retirement, but you can't tell her that. She was on every bird. She really put on a show for us. Uh, we had our co-host from the radio show, Linda Kutcher, was there. She was very excited. She shot her first teal and was very excited about that, made a really good shot on it. So all in all, we had great weather, great setup, and it continued on the next day there. In fact, we're going to show you some of the highlights from that hunt and also listen to Captain Ryan. He'll give you a forecast of what he thinks for the rest of this teal season and what we're looking ahead for the big duck season. Well, as you can see, the aquatic vegetation is immense. The river was 16 and a half all year. So they're, they're gonna, and we had them by the tens of thousands last week coming with that full moon. But when that water went out, a lot of them went south. They're just passing through. They're not here to stay. So a lot of those birds took off, went to Nicaragua, and they're there. You know, they'll spend the winter there. So there's another little trough coming down, and those birds will ride that trough, and Friday morning we'll have a new charge. And it's just the way it works. Vermilion waterfowl, Don. Them two young guys, Hayden Reshort and Jack Arsenault. Boy, have they made that place even better than I remember. So instead of just talking about it, let's go see it. And Chris is out there. Chris got to shoot. Everybody got to shoot. This is Vermilion Waterfowl. I guess you can call it. It's in between Gaydon and Klondike, just south of Highway 14. My name is Owen Broussard. I go to Lowerville and my dad owns Gator Tail and I'm ready to shoot some teal. Oh. 
Yeah, yeah. So we got him filming right now. Chris is going to be shooting. There you go. I can shoot him with a camera and a gun sometimes. Shoot, you good. can taste the BBs on that one. The mask, kid. The mask, your question. Is it more fun to shoot camera? It depends. I miss a lot more with a gun than I do with a camera. <laughs> Everyone, uh, it's 7, 7.32. We started around 6.35ish, and uh, we got 36 birds killed, man. It was a great little hunt. Uh, I'm, I'm glad y'all came, man. It was fun, and uh, I mean, we got some good footage, hopefully. All right, now look at me. <laughs> now the fun part, the bird count. Hayden yeah. Richard, the million waterfowl. Hayden, I can't thank you enough for the invitation. You got with Chris, uh, just like Historic. I've been on this farm before a long time ago, for 20 years. Y'all have brought it back. And after five years, you know, it's, nobody's done anything with it. It's, it's unbelievable. We got hunters all over. How many hunters you had this morning? We got we got 21 people, including guides. Uh, we got four groups on this farm right now. We also got another group on the south side, but uh, we got four groups with the booking the hunts and stuff on this end. Big Four Road is famous over here in the Million Parish. Tell us a little bit more about Vermilion Waterfowl. Uh, we uh, we started off, man, we uh, we always hunted privately. I used to guy when I was younger, and, and me and Jack Arsenault, my partner, man, he is uh, he is the brainchild of all this. He's the one that got me going, and he come he come approach me about it, and asked me if he wanted to do it. I said, yeah, we, we, well, we had this and we had this farm in mind, so it was kind of one of those things where great farm, set ourselves up for success. Like I said, I, I can't thank Jack Arsenault enough, man. He, he's my he's my guy, but uh. I've been doing the guiding stuff privately for people around here, and I decided that, you know what, we, we got something good, we can offer something good to people, a premier waterfowl spot, so we're gonna do it, and this is where we started. And like I said, this farm, man, especially on Big Four Road, it's historically known for teal season, right? And spec season, which is coming up. I, I can't wait for that also. I can imagine, I've been here. I know all the excitement I had this morning coming out. 
Uh, thanks to Chris for putting it together. Can't thank you enough, your daddy, Richard, and all the, everybody was out there this morning in the excitement. You said, don't hurry, guys. Don't yeah. hurry, guys. I promise you, we would be through at 730. You missed it five minutes. <laughs> Yeah, that's the one thing is that we don't have a we don't have a problem shooting birds, and I, I saw them yesterday, and I kind of told people that it's it's gonna be good, and just don't get in a rush, you know. It's fun when you don't get in a rush, you be safe. It's it's always a good. Well, time. if y'all recognize this guy last week, we did the show, and uh, you know he's the state duck calling champion, senior state duck calling champion. We're gonna be going to Stuttgart. Yes, sir. And uh, pretty soon, are you ready? You learned anything? It's your first time. Yeah, this going is, to the world championships. This now. is my first time qualifying. I've been chasing it for a few years, and uh. I did a few regionals. I went to Illinois one, man. I got, I got it handed to me, and I got to go home. And I spent two weeks just getting on it, man, really practicing. And came to Gate on, got it done, won the state. Who's your mentor? Well, you've been calling. They got a lot of great duck callers over here in the Gate on every million there, and they go all over the state. But who, who you attribute to being your your best teacher or the one that got you started? Richie, my dad down here, he's standing down there somewhere. He's walking off, but uh, Richie helped me a lot, man. Richie got me started. He put me in the marsh, some good duck blinds, man, good duck hunting. And then I turned around and I got up, got on with James Myers and Bill Daniels at Riceland, Riceland Custom Calls. And uh, ever since we've done that, I've been helping them and they've been helping me. And man, we've been going back and forth. This is the first year that really, last year, get Riceland Custom Calls built the Main Street Call. I'm the first person to qualify for Riceland custom calls to go to world. So that was a really big thing for us. That was probably the coolest part. Winning state's great, but that was the coolest part for me. But yeah, Riceland custom calls, Bill Daniels, James Myers, and, and my dad. Those three people, man, have really helped me. Yeah, you can believe it. Tilt is tilt landing <laughs> behind us. We're going to cut it a little shorter. Look, I want to thank you again, but I want to promise on TV, the first week of spec season, are you going to have us back? We open up on November 4th. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can just do. Just follow just a camera. What about Chris? Oh, I love Chris. Chris is coming. That's what I'm talking <laughs> We all love Chris. No, we're going to, uh, I'm going to look into it. Golly, they're still coming in, huh? Yeah, uh, yeah it's believable. November 4th, we're going to be opening up and spec hunting. And normally this area, like I said, we have specs early. We're going to we're gonna shoot them. Hopefully we get them on camera. And right, make good luck. Hunt. And thank you. Thank you. Number one thing. You got another job, but this is important to you starting with me and Waterfowl. How people get in touch with you? We have a Facebook page, Vermilion Waterfowl on Facebook. We also have an email, vermilionwaterfowl at yahoo.com. It's a little easier on me. We also have a phone number, 337-600-2700 is the phone number. Call me up. I answer it. It's me. I, I do all the booking. I do all the operations here. I, I, I kind of run the show. So if you need to book a teal hunt or spec hunt, give me a call. Send me an email. I'll answer it, and I'll try to get you set up. That's it. You're watching Paradise, Louisiana. People like him and places like this what makes Louisiana a paradise. My name is Owen Bussard and I told you I'm going to give my limit today. in Paradise, Louisiana. Hi, I'm John Jackson, and you know we always say we gather our groceries out the bayou. Whether it's freshwater, saltwater, catfish, redfish, you have tons of choices when it comes to fish in Louisiana. But when I fry fish, there's only one choice, and that's Louisiana fish fry. My new favorite, the Cajun fish fry, has the perfect amount of cornmeal, corn flour, and the perfect mix of spices that really bring the heat. Hey, if you're craving Cajun, go look for the bright red bag at your local grocers. Bring home the taste of Louisiana with Louisiana Fish Fry.
And welcome back to Paradise, Louisiana, where at Martian Bayou Outfitters in the heart of the French Quarter. Uh, we talked to Ben Tiblier, and Ben told us that this all started from this, Martian Bayou Magazine. And if you haven't seen the September issue, the current issue right now, the cover girl for this magazine, Linda Kutcher, my co-host on radio show on Saturday mornings, is on the cover, and she wrote an excellent story about our Cajun invasion trip. It's 13 years and running now. And Linda, what a great story you wrote. Thank you. Thank you. 13 years is a long time to do this trip, but I understand exactly why it's lasted so long, because it's an incredible trip. So a lot of people have the dream of going to Alaska, and they have it from childhood all the way. But unfortunately, most people end up seeing Alaska from a cruise ship. And you know, as well as I do, that that's not really experiencing on the ground Alaska. So when you book through the Cajun Invasion Alaska trip, you're not only getting those fishing experiences, you're getting the gear, the guides, you're getting the down-home wonderful hospitality that you can really only get in New Orleans, but you're getting it up in Alaska. Um, so with everything being inclusive, it's so much of a better way to see Alaska than from a cruise ship. You're actually walking in the streams, you're on the lakes, you're um, pulling the fish out of the water cooking them right there on the bank and eating them as fresh as it gets. So it was a wonderful experience. And it's a turnkey operation, Ralph and Timmy Crystal. You can't say enough about how, oh. how easy they make it. That's why it's so popular. They make it easy and they make, it, they make you feel loved and warm. <laughs> and it's like being at home. So it's an incredible experience. I'd like to say something about this cover, though. In my defense, I was freezing on this day. And I actually did catch this fish. So a lot of times, fish cover girls, they're looking beautiful. They haven't actually caught the fish, okay? So in if they my, did, they wouldn't look the way they, they wouldn't did. look flawless. But you right? did an excellent job of documenting the trip, and I want to invite people Don. to pick up a copy, read Thank it, you. and look at the pictures. You did a great job on the photography too. It's a very good story. How long have you been writing for Martian Bayou? Oh, that's a great question. I think probably six, seven years. Yeah. And what's coming up? Well, actually, we did a teal hunt just this uh, last couple of days, opening day of teal season, and I actually shot my first teal fabulous experience. I can't wait to write about it. And that's going to be coming up in the October edition of Martian Bayou magazine. And Martian Bayou, you can pick these up at most of the places that advertise in there and other yes, places. where absolutely. Sporting goods stores, Academy restaurants, anywhere in southern Louisiana that sells fishing, hunting gear, you're going to find one of these magazines. All right. Very interesting story and a lot of other stories about Louisiana. Peter Bosey also joins us. Now, Peter, you're going to be on the cover. Well, maybe not you, but your operation <laughs> will be on the cover of the upcoming right. issue called The Sanctuary. Tell us about The Sanctuary. Well, The Sanctuary is uh, it's an hour north of Baton Rouge. Uh, it's just north of Woodville, Mississippi. Uh, it's on this incredible escarpment overlooking the Mississippi Delta. Uh, you really have unobstructed views for six miles until you actually, you know, hit the river. Uh, it's uh, old growth forest, oak and, and hickory. Uh, it is a high fence sanctuary. Uh, we have uh, both elk and whitetail on the property and some fallow. Uh, the herd really has been managed over the last several years. Uh, it's in fantastic shape. Uh, really geared towards uh, you know, corporate hunts, uh, mm -hmm. individuals wanting to go up. Uh, really enjoy the creature comforts of a, of a beautiful lodge. Uh, can sleep up to 16 in the lodge. We also have a, a, another uh, building that's uh, just down the path uh, from the main lodge where uh, we can have extra people there. Uh, great uh, food, uh, home cooking, but we can bring in special chefs if you'd like. Uh, fantastic white till uh, trophy size uh, deer. Uh, and then elk as well, uh, and we do have uh, fallow and some red stag on the property. Uh, also fantastic fishing, we've got some finger lakes uh, up there with uh, sockele, uh, trophy bass, uh, and you know this time of year with hunting season starting and the weather's getting a little cool and the, the animals are starting to move, it's, uh, we were up there last weekend, it was fantastic. Well, the sanctuary is the kind of place, you know, and I talk to people on a regular basis that have been in clubs and they kind of get burned out on it. The rules, the work days, finding the time to go, that's all done at the sanctuary. Absolutely, and you know, we'll pick, we'll pick you up at the airport if you're flying in, uh, drive you up. Uh, we can, we can uh, you know, accommodate with a fantastic chef from here in New Orleans. Uh, you know, good, really nice wine list. Uh, so it's, it's all the cre creature comforts. And I'll tell you, I've, I've done safaris in Africa and, and up to Alaska and places like that. And, and this is like being in a safari lodge uh, in Tanzania. It really is. Mm. And then you look out over that escarpment, you have a, a cocktail looking at the sunset. Uh, fantastic. Wake up in the morning and enjoy the hunt. Uh, there's really, it's, 
and it's close proximity here. It's it's just uh, you know a little over two hours away, so hard to beat. So bow hunting, gun hunting. When does the season open, and how long will it be open? Uh, it it really uh, works with the same uh, schedule as uh, Mississippi State for mm -hmm. archery, for primitive, and and for rifle. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so we're, we're adhering to those, obviously, those guidelines. So um, okay. we're right there at the start of the season. Well, all the information will be in the next issue of Martian Bayou Magazine, but if you'd like to get ahead of that, tell them how to contact you. Well, you can reach us at 504-503-0421. Uh, uh, Ask for Sandra. Uh, or if you want to email her, it's schapman at pelicanneworleans.com. And our uh, website is uh, bookthesanctuarylodge.com. Well, you guys are providing a great service. Oh, he had me at Creature Comfort. <laughs> oh, I was sold right that. there. Thanks to both of you, Peter oh. Bowles and Linda Kutcher, for coming. You're nice welcome. Meeting you. It was nice meeting yeah. you as well. Very nice meeting you. Very good. We'll be back with more from Martian Bayou Outfitters in the heart of the French Quarter, where you're watching Paradise, Louisiana. Benny's Car Wash and Oil Change has been keeping cars and trucks in Baton Rouge clean and running smooth for over 50 years. At Benny's, we feature professional car washing, complete detailing, high-tech waxing and buffing, interior cleaning, and tire shine. Benny's, one stop for car maintenance with complete oil and lube services and even state inspections at our express locations. Visit one of our five convenient locations, including our newest store on Greenwell Springs Road. And don't forget to stop by Be Quick Convenience Store and Fuel Stop. Benny's Car Wash and Oil Change. Drive in dirty, drive out clean. Hey, I'm Mitch Rotolo, owner of Rotolo's Pizzeria. Our pizzas are prepared every day using the freshest ingredients. But Rotolo's has so much more to offer than just delicious pizza. We have an array of healthy salads and tasty wraps, a wide choice of pasta like spaghetti and chicken parmesan, zesty buffalo wings, and our selection of savory calzones. And don't forget to try one of our amazing desserts. Come into any of our local restaurants or check out our entire menu online at rotolo's.com. That's just the way we Rotolo. Welcome back to Paradise, Louisiana. Today at Martian Bayou Outfitters in the heart of the French Quarter in New Orleans. We're joined by a familiar face on this program, Sam Barbera. Sam, welcome aboard again. I'm glad to be here. We've got a lot going on, Sam, and yeah. the wildlife. It's uh, fall. There's hunting. a lot of stuff going First on. First day of fall this yeah. week. That's right. You know, we got the big National Hunting and Fishing Day celebration that Wildlife and Fisheries has put on. In fact, there'll be celebrations going on all across the country. You've got one that you're working with that's very special. Yes, sir. I went to it last week, last Saturday, actually. It's the uh, Bob R. Jones Idlewood Research Station. They had what's called the Feliciana Wildlife Expo. Some of the highlights were uh, live bees, you know, bees that make honey. Um, snakes, they had a king snake there, they had a, a, a rat snake, they had a really brave little fella that actually held this giant king snake. Got some great footage of that. There was BB gun shooting, shotgun shooting, falconry, they had a big buck contest. Facility's beautiful. It's located three miles south of Clinton on 67 and two miles east on Ottawood Road. Um, it's 1,800 acres. They concentrate on tree fruit products, weed control, and wildlife research on deer, quail, and turkey. It's an LSU Ag Center property. Also, if Saturday wasn't busy enough today, we had the inaugural Dose of the Coast fundraiser in Baton Rouge. Ashley Ferguson did a fantastic job. The theme was Oktoberfest. There was, uh, we had the football game on the, on the big screen, which didn't help the mood of the crowd at all. <laughs> but uh, very good libations from uh, the good people at Abita and uh, we had an absolute blast. For more information on Dose of the Coast, which is a fantastic uh, organization, go to doseofthecoast.org. Well, it's a great event. Sam, tell us what's going on at Louisiana Wildlife and Fisheries Foundation. Well, at the are. foundation, October 12th, we have a big event at uh, Live Oak Arabians in Baton Rouge. It's called Wild Night. It's where somewhere between 16 and 20 restaurants from the, around the Baton Rouge area come and cook and compete. It's kind of like a big cook-off with an open bar, and it's our annual fundraiser. It's a blast. If you've never been to the Live Oak Arabians in Baton Rouge, you got to come just to see this Arabian horse form. It's incredible. Great event. For more information, wildnight.org. Hey, thanks for coming down. You're very welcome. What hey, do you think about this store? Martian I think it's fantastic. Yeah. This is probably my 10th time I have uh, in here. I got a couple of pictures up on the wall. Mm -hmm. I, feel like, uh, I feel like I'm at home when I walk in here. <laughs> what, about, what, what about some extra dudes? You got any other new fuss? <laughs> Good friend of ours from the courthouse, 
attorney, Carl Babin, tells me when he needs a, a little laugh, he watches you and me on TV, and he says he, he, oh, that's he a likes lot it. To laugh about. He says he likes it when I'm on with Gary. So I want to tell you hi, Carl. <laughs> Same with me, Carl. All right, we'll be back with more. You're watching Paradise, Louisiana. Pause moving in storage. We just sold our house. Congratulations. We have two weeks to move. We'll deliver a few containers. Our new home's not ready. No problem. You can store things with us while you're between homes. We might need help. We'll refer trusted packers. We'll be staying at my brother's. Well, that sounds... He has kids of his own. Well... Five of them. Ma'am? Help. Trust us for local and long-distance moving and store at our storage centers. Pods. Moving in storage. Solved. The best part about being a member of a Touchstone Energy Cooperative is that it's your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. That's the power of your co-op membership. Demco, your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. Yeah, there he is. You're behind him. Oh, there he is. Got him. Ooh. Awesome. <laughs> well, on this particular day, we are running across a very, very shallow flat. And it's a big, giant lagoon, a big, large duck pond, and we saw a very large school of redfish. And what made it so neat is the fact that they were actually tailing in the water. Now, when, when we see things like this, of course, sight fishing is probably your most effective way to, to actually fish. If you got a little bit of sunlight, due to the fact that it's a lot of fish in the shallows, the water's relatively clean, you can see these big redfish floating. Now some of the things you're going to see while sight fishing, if you're in a productive area, is big, large stingrays. I reiterate this on every Dockside TV episode, is that redfish and stingrays seem to live in the same habitat. So seeing stingrays is a good thing. Also. One of the things that's going to happen to you while red fishing, sight fishing, is you're going to sometimes a lot, the boat's going to get too close to a fish because you're not going to pick him up in time with your eyes. And sometimes if you let a fish get too close to the boat, you're going to spook him more often than not. So you want to see the fish from five to ten feet away. And then these big ones like this, sometimes you can see them 20, 30 yards away. And if they're tailing, you can see them 50 to you know, 100 yards away. The other thing you're going to have happen from time to time is you're going to cast on a fish. He's going to eat the lure. You've got to set the hook. And you're just going to miss the fish because it's, it's just out of pure excitement. You see your lure disappear, and it's just a natural habit to set the hook. Where, you know, you want to try to give it somewhat of a pause when you see the fish eat it. Let him get it back some before you drive the hook through its mouth. But extremely fun way to fish, and this day was no exception. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Dockside TV, catching big, beautiful tailing redfish in the marshes off of Lake Pontchartrain. For all other episodes, go to matrixshad.com, as we have plenty of redfish episodes, but this, this one right here might have been our most enjoyable day ever shooting at Dockside TV. Until next time, good fishing. Relationships are everything in life. For me, the most important relationships start with faith, 
family and friends. I feel blessed to be married to my high school sweetheart of over 25 years. We were both born and raised in Louisiana and so were our four children. We're proud to call Louisiana our home. That's why giving back is so important to us. Whether it's car seats, bicycles, or helping those in need. At Gordon McKern Injury Attorneys, we feel blessed knowing that we can come to work every day and help our community when they need us the most. Call 800-653-9968. Hi, I'm Blake with uh, Huck Fence Cafe. This is Kyle. Uh, today we have our shrimp and grits um, made with a beer base, some fresh herbs, and finished off with a little uh, butter. Here we have our uh, Boonan stuffed pork chop, top with a pepper jelly glaze, served over braised cabbage. We're at right. 135 Decatur Street in the French Quarter. Uh, our website is HuckFinsCafe.com. We serve Cajun Creole cuisine, and as well as some American fare, just general American fare. A little, little bit of something for everyone. Aggressive, modern, and durable. The latest advancement in spinning has the Revo name on it, and almost a century of fishing expertise in it. No matter where your passion takes you, world-class fishing is only a Revo away. Welcome to the Paradise, Louisiana H and H Tournament Report, Gary. What you got on us? We got a bunch of them. First of all, I got a report. It's called a Sushu. It's just for people that fished with Sushu. It was over there at Lake St. Catherine, uh, with the stewards over there. Dave and Angie have been doing a great job. But let me tell you what. They got so many young captains that are working out of there. And what's going good? All these projects that we doing for charities and conservation groups. They have been helping us to supply the captains, and they've doing a tremendous job. They had a little tournament you want me to mention because a lot of those captains fished. They had all all the fish they fished with, with Tushu Lewis and uh, the J.D. Spinnerbait. So that's what they were doing. They were tied to that. F first place, we had 15 pounds in redfish. And let me read this. And it was Gabe Minich and Justin... Harder than now you, you ought to be reading these because you can you've been on the TV and on the radio so long. How do you spell these names? Pronounce them as harder than they they come in first and then uh, the the speck of trout was Tyler Jones, uh, wicked fishing charters and uh, he caught it on a shoot two in the JD Spinner match. So that's the tournament. Now we got a bunch of them coming up, Don. Uh, we got the North Shore. Fishing Report Bass Tournament coming up on October the 7th. and seems like they're all this weekend. We got the Grand Isle Ladies Rodeo again. I'm going to mention that the 6th and 7th. And October the 7th, the Lafayette Kayak Fishing Club will be fishing out of Calcasieu Point. And that's another big tournament over there. And I want to mention one more thing, too. The Libya Pier is open. It opened last week. They had a big thing. It's lighted pier. You can fish today. You can shrimp off of it. You can definitely fish off of it. So you know, that's uh, very important. We get a lot of people. As far as the tournament look. report, that's all I got now. All right, very good. Well, that's now it's oh, one more. Benicia now. Benicia now is coming. Y'all might be too late right now. If you watch in on Wednesday, you still got time to go to Benicia. And that now. will be held at the Lake Catherine Island Marina. Also, and it was a rodeo that went away, and they brought it back very, very successfully. So if you and also for you kayak fishermen, there is a kayak category there. And now for our Berkeley Abu Garcia fishing report, we brought in Captain Brooks Levy. And Brooks, thanks for stopping by thanks here. Thanks for having me all, absolutely. The, you know, the fall fishing is uh, just picking up great. And uh, we're starting to see plenty of redfish out of redfish spots that we fish. Um, we've been catching limits of redfish with pretty much no problem. Our speckled trout have been starting to show up as well. You know, usually they show up inland a little later than the redfish do for us. Uh, you know, in the Wrigley's Lake Pontchartrain area, 
but the crowd is starting to show up, so I think it's going to be a really, really good fall yeah. for us. Um, that first cool front came, and it really, it really seemed to kick it off. Uh, so those days of, yes, you know, having to run out an hour, hour and fifteen minutes mm -hmm. from the Wrigley's Pontchartrain Train area, I think, are over. What do you consider your area that you cover? I fish. Uh, the Wrigley's, Lake Ponce Train, Lake Bourne, Biloxi Marsh, um, and all in between the Mississippi Sound a little bit. Um, you know, we venture over towards Chalmette and fish the wall area in the oh. winter. It's about to get started over there. I heard mm -hmm. September, October, and I got a report from over there from the Wrigley's Canal that they're mm -hmm. dredging. Somebody's mm -hmm. dredging it. It's all muddy all the way out that way. Uh, we're talking to the stewards over there, and they were telling me right now, but the trout are showing up in Bourne. They're having trouble right there, cause same thing. Water's still muddy mm -hmm. from the storm, but my friend that's building a the camp there said, you know why? why? It, it, they're dredging some kind of mud and everything right there in the Wrigley's and the Cohagen Canal. Mm -hmm. What is going on? Have you heard anything on that? I, I'm not sure about the one in, uh, in the Gohagen's Canal area, but I know they're dredging it. Uh, they have a huge dredge out in Lake Ponch Train, right at the mouth of uh, Salt Bayou, Salt Bayou, mm -hmm. and right over by uh, by Liberty over mm -hmm. there. They've got a big dredge, and they have a, they have a huge know marsh on that? restoration. Yeah, it's a marsh restoration project yeah. because that property is part of the Big Branch National Wildlife Refuge. How, so how they're long usually is that very be protective of federal properties. Right. It's going to be going on for quite a while, and uh, it's going to change that habitat. We saw they did some of those earlier a couple of years ago in Big Branch and another portion of it. And it, uh, it, it has turned out to be very successful they, in creating more marsh area. They told me right there, Salt Bayou and the Cohagen Canal, October and November is the best time fishing off the pier and then catching Absolutely. a lot of fish. Mm -hmm. Good cold weather, cold weather spot too. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Don, you got, I got some reports to really also from, from Grand Isle again. They're still catching mm -hmm. it. Tommy Vidreen sent in there. By the way, I got a, a a, a, a couple big tuna that came out so behind the shrimp boats about 30 miles off. Buggy Baker was on that trip. Uh, Tommy and Vidrine have been catching and releasing tr trout anywhere from 24 to 20, 25 inches. He released them. Besides the one he's been catching, he's also using pokies. And Highway 1, we're getting reports now right now from Highway 1. That's just going to get better. Every time a cold front comes in, Highway 1 is hot as a pistol. You know, they're fishing off the highway. They're using live shrimp. They're fishing Carolina rigs or they're fishing under a car. The Lee Bill, uh, Mike Yusey, and Jimmy Duro, they sent us a picture where they had both trout, redfish, and flounder. They're fishing the, the specks and everything with Carolina rig and live shrimp. And then the best day, they call them both Friday and Saturday. Uh, I done, that's all I got, salt water. Well, I had a really good report that came in from the Breton Islands. Uh, some boaters went out there, actually were on a lemon fish trip, and that didn't work out so well, and they stopped there, and it was top water action on and on. I'm talking three to five pound specks and some good fishing out there this time of the year. Bruce, do you do any freshwater fishing? Not really. I used to when I was younger. You know, I, I grew up on Bayou Bonfica, mm -hmm. where I would leave in my flat boat, you know, six and eight years old. I would go fish the bayous around in my flat boat, but once I got a little older and got a taste of saltwater fishing, they just, to me, there's nothing really <laughs> like it, you know. Sure is. Gary, what kind of freshwater reports have we Freshwater been got at Henderson mm -hmm. and Bayou Black Bayou still Black, is real that's good. Bayou Black, shining star. Gary, Gary Krause had been fishing the Terrebonne. He was going to do a show with Tony and them because he'd been killing them on spinnerbait and mm -hmm. the Terrebonne mark. All those little buys in there. And all of a sudden, they go out there and the tide was wrong. They luckily made a show with 10 fish. And Gary said he was so frustrated, it was unbelievable. Uh, the spillway, I've heard other reports that were turning in. I talked to them boys again, still fishing that Bobby Golden flattail, uh, Mr. Pizzolata. They over there catching those fish in Lake Verrett. They ain't catching a lot of numbers, but they're tremendous size in Lake Verrett. So up north, I talked to, I talked to Kobe Daniels. Okay, they're catching Sacalay, all those lakes up there, Freshwater Lake and all those lakes up there, they're catching Sacalay. By the way, he also sent me a picture of some doves, and Bruce Dodd sent a picture of his grandson holding some doves up. So I didn't give a dove report last week. Everybody was wanting to know where they could go to get a paid hunt. Top Gun is one of the places you can go. That's it. All right. 
Don't forget to uh, help us out with those fishing reports. We love to get pictures in. Send them to us at Gary at Paradise, Louisiana. Tell us where you were, what you caught them on. A little bit of technique will always help and go a long way. Anything else, gentlemen? That's it, Coach. All right. Thank That'll you. Do it. Thank Glad you all. To meet you. Appreciate it. And we're going to take coming me. by. Whenever you want. To, I hated to hear you say you quit fishing bass. Uh oh. Uh oh. Look, look what's coming. Look. Uh oh. oh wow. The show is definitely over now. Absolutely. Take a look at this. Oh yeah. <laughs> we'll that. see y'all next week. We're busy now. Take care. <laughs> see y'all. Paradise, Louisiana is presented by Rotolo's Pizzeria. Fresh ingredients, friendly service. That's just the way we Rotolo. Demco, your touchstone energy cooperative. Pro Drive Outboards. Baton Rouge Coca-Cola Bottling Company. Benny's Car Wash and Oil Change. Cracker Barrel Convenience Stores. We have more than you expect. Always fresh, never frozen, raising canes. Louisiana Fish Fry Products. And by CCA Louisiana and the CCA Louisiana Star Tournament.